Let's take a look at a motor data sheet and explore some of the relationships between the numbers. For this analysis, I've chosen the Balder 1406T single phase motor. It's a three horsepower motor, and if we look at the nameplate data, we'll see that it can be wired to run on 115 or 230 volts. And this is in America, so it's a 60 hertz machine. Now, let's write down some of the specs here. We know that it is a three horsepower motor. The efficiency is listed here. So eta is equal to 78%. And the power factor is listed as 88. So the power factor is equal to 0 0.88. Know that these numbers, the efficiency, eta here, and the power factor are both listed while the motor is operating at a nominal 3 horsepower. And what I'd like to explore in this video is the current relationship. So if we were to place an amp clamp right there on this line, according to the data sheet, if the motor is running at 230 volts, we'll assume a phase angle of zero, if the motor is running at 230 volts, we would expect the current to be 14 amps. And that's what we're going to show in this video. We're going to show that if you know the voltage, the horsepower, the efficiency, and the power factor, you can determine the current. We're going to explore this in two parts. First, I'll show you the general idea, and then we'll get into the specific calculations using Scilab. Let's start with power. You may have seen these power flow diagrams before, and they basically tell you that there's going to be a power out, a power in, and then there's going to be losses along the way. For this particular motor, we know that the power out is 3 horsepower. We also know that the efficiency is 78%. So that means of the power in, only 78% of it makes it to power out. Or if you preferred, we could write that as efficiency is equal to power out over power in. It follows that the power in is equal to the power out divided by efficiency. The next step is to use the power triangle to organize our thoughts. Down here we have real power, which is the power going into the motor, and we define that as the output power times 1 over efficiency. You'll recall power factor is the cosine of theta. Therefore, theta is equal to the arc cosine of the power factor. Also, from trigonometry, you'll recall that cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. You can see how these two are related, which also means that the power factor is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse which makes it really nice for our power triangle because now we can just say that the magnitude of S is equal to the power out 1 over N times 1 over power factor. At this point in the problem we know the vector S. You recall S is equal to the voltage times the complex conjugate of the current. And it follows, then, that the current, complex conjugate, is equal to S divided by V. And finally, if we take the magnitude of the current, that is what we should measure on our amp meter. Again, to recap, based on voltage, horsepower, efficiency, and power factor, we are going to show that the current is 14 amps. Now we're going to shift over to Scilab and show how the calculations are performed. Let's start by entering some of the values. The voltage source is equal to 230. Power out is equal to 3 horsepower. Efficiency, lowercase m, efficiency is equal to 0.78. Power factor is equal to 0 0.88.
power power in is equal to power out divided by efficiency. So that's the power in expressed as horsepower, but we want the power in expressed as watts. So we're going to multiply by 746 because every horsepower is represented by 746 watts. There we go. Next, let's calculate the angle. Angle in radians is equal to arc cosine of the power factor. If you prefer, you could say the angle is equal to the radians to degrees of the radians. There we go, so 28 degrees. And now we can figure out the magnitude of S. Let's write some of these numbers down before I forget. So power in is 2870 watts. The angle is 28.4 degrees. And now we're looking to calculate the magnitude of S. So S magnitude is equal to power in times 1 over power factor. So that's 3260 VA. And now we can enter S. So S is equal to the magnitude of S times cosine of the radians plus J times sine of the radians. Oops, not S minus mag. S underscore mag, there we go. We could have saved some typing if we used the complex exponential form of this, in which case we would have said that S is equal to S magnitude times E raised to the J times radians. Notice how these numbers are identical. The math behind these complex exponentials is just beautiful. Um, let's take a quick look at S. This helper function can be used as a quick sanity check for our numbers. So our power is given here as P, our reactive power is given as Q, here we have complex power as a phasor, and finally the power factor is very close to what we started out with, and it is indeed inductive. With that we can move on to perform the final part of our problem, and that is to calculate I. Current is equal to complex power divided by the voltage source. That's not quite right. We need to take the complex conjugate of that. And in Scilab, with this tick mark after that, we're all set. To conclude this video, let's look at the current in phasor form. Oops. Don't forget to add the frequency. There we go. This phasor right here is the one of interest. And it looks like we succeeded. If we used an amp clamp to measure the current on that line, we would have 14 amps RMS. If you would like to use the Scilab functions, please see the links below. Also, leave a comment if you have any particular problems that you would like to see solved.